Okay, do you want to start by talking to me about Lion and Lionheart? What appealed to you about the film? What did you like about the script? It was really a no-brainer, you know, like uh, the, the, the role was so soulful and, and um, you know, the fact that it was based on a true story of this young boy who was, you know, torn away from his family and then, you know, left to fend for himself on the streets of India. From there, he had a second chance at life when he was adopted by an Australian family. Uh, it's just a story of love and hope and something that's very aspirational and it's kind of a role that I was itching to, you know, be a part of the journey, really. So, um, yeah, it was great that I got to be a part of it. Yeah. What impact are you hoping that it has on audiences? Um, uh, it has had a great impact. You know, sorry, answering the rest of that question with the Lionheart campaign, but uh, we set that up in conjunction with the release of the film and it, it deals with three charities, um, Railway Children India, Childline India and Magic Bus. And uh, we've tried to use the film to promote these charities and raise money for them. Uh, I think on the tour, we'd got a figure, I think it was somewhere over a quarter of a million in counting. So it's been pretty amazing so far. How do you make sure that a campaign like that has legs, has longevity, that people don't just watch the film and are maybe affected for a week and then forget about it? Well, it's difficult, you know, that that's great. That's one of the reasons why this is so amazing when Shivas, you know, called and we set this up, was it was another way to, you know, talk about the cause, talk about the charity. You know, the film really changed my life and it's really important that I can give back as well to those kids. And, and you know, I think the film also does a lot of talking for itself. It, it really, it does leave a lasting impression and the filmmakers, our director and producers in, in particular have really trilled that message in about the 80,000 children that are left on the streets every year and uh, you know there are 11 million children in total approximately that are, are still on the streets today they're staggering numbers yeah. the Shivers event is very much about winning the right way and recognizing people who are paying it forward what does that look like for you uh what winning the right way i think it's about uh the idea of um using your success uh to give uh, the underprivileged a voice, you know, and I think, you know, success can be a force, a force of good, you know, and um, I, for me, I think the most influential platforms are media and, and the arts. So to use that to promote messages of unity, positivity, shed light on topics that many aren't aware of, that's really important and, and a beautiful thing to be able to do through our storytelling. Well, this is the second film you've done that really does that. What's been the legacy of Slumdog Millionaire, do you think, in that regard? I feel like it really connected to, to, to people on a, on a global level and it, it moved a lot of people and we were highlighting, again, uh, you know, the, the kind of story of these three kids that were left to fend for themselves. Um, and it's really drawn a, a big interest in that, so... I hope it's done well. I, I, I don't know how to really keep a tab on that in any way. I mean, all I can do from my point of view is try and search for stories like that that can help broaden people's perspectives and, and, and give them slices of life that they wouldn't otherwise be exposed to. What kind of challenges does Hollywood and the film industry face when it goes and works in developing nations? I mean, I know there are complexities with differing pay scales, for example. I don't... I wouldn't know, to be honest. I feel... For me, it's been an absolute joy. I've shot five films in India, and the, the quality and the technical ability of the crews out there and the locations, just as a setting, as a canvas to film on, it's incredible. And uh, you can see it has a Goliath industry in the shape of Bollywood. They actually churn out more films than Hollywood does and it, I think has a bigger, bigger revenue. So I'm, I'm not sure about the guilds and the, the minutiae of, you know, what that is like but um in terms of going out there as an actor and filming and making movies in india it's i've had the best experiences of my life talk to me about your experiences with the film industry i mean we're a, a business show it's been eight years since slumdog millionaire how have you seen your industry the business of making movies change in that time uh, you know it's kind of the gap is is increasing between the massive mega budget films and the small indies television is really becoming uh, you know, taking over in terms of the freedom to tell stories that, you know, a writer's medium 
and I think you know for me as an actor uh, and a you know a British Asian actor in particular it's becoming more and more diverse more and more inclusive the the storytelling's really there's more opportunity for more people now which is great you know it's moving in a positive direction Talk to me about the opportunity for diversity of roles for you. I mean, I've read some of your interviews and I know that you get frustrated by interviewers talking about all your roles almost as if they are the same, as if mm. you're playing the Indian man. What are those interviewers missing? What are they not seeing? I think they're just missing the point of what they're watching, to be honest. I mean, to compare Lion, you know, where I spent eight months playing an, a, an Australian man, uh, and comparing it to playing a, a kid who goes on a, a game show to find his lover from the slums, it, they're just different, you know. Or I, play, I did a film called The Man Who Knew Infinity about a true story about the first Indian mathematician who kind of revolutionised the mathematical world and was the first fellow at Cambridge, you know. And that was opposite Jeremy Irons. They're, they're all so different, you know. Uh, maybe you're touching on the character's heritage at, as part of the texture of who the human being is, but it's not the sole, the sole motivation of the character. So I, I don't know, I just think sometimes it's lazy journalism, to be honest. A little bit of typecasting in audiences' minds or journalists' minds, do you think? Um, maybe, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, for me, I just look at it as, a, you know, exciting journeys. And for me, I want to be able to represent people like myself on screen you know there should be a diverse representation in our cinema if we're if what we're doing is about representing humanity it, it shouldn't just be this specific set of people what about the hispanic community what about the you know just there's so many different um stories to be told and uh you know that's why actors like me are you know are really having a good time now in cinema because there are more stories to be told. Well, you've also had a good time in television, starting off, of course, in, in Skins. The usual projection is from TV into movies, and now we're seeing movie stars, actors going back into TV, which you've done with, with Newsroom as well. Would you do more television? Is that something that interests you? Yeah, I mean, it, I guess it depends on the story. And for me, in particular, it depends on the kind of prep time. Newsroom was a, a beautiful experience. It was also very pressurised environment because we're kind of learning so, such a dense kind of dialogue, Aaron Sorkin's words, in such a short period of time. So there was a real stress that came along with that. So to be able to pull off that every week and a half to two weeks was really difficult, yeah. I understand you've been working on a screenplay based on Hindu mythology. What can you tell me about that? Not much right now. But, uh, yeah, it's about... You know, I've wanted to go in and also give birth to stories and not just step in at the final stage. So there's just stories that are, are really close to me that I'd love to be able to put out there and uh, to get behind a camera and try and, you know, from the inception of an idea to filming it to acting in it, that is a challenge that I'd like to take on. Well, you've also been working as an executive producer on Hotel Mumbai. What has that taught you? What have you learned from that experience? I was just very passionate about the story, you know, it affected me really deeply um, and when this, when they were making a film about it I was very adamant that I, I would want to be a part of it and make sure it's told sensitively. Um, I was in India, I just left India when the attacks happened um, and uh, I remember coming home and seeing my parents standing in front of the television in tears looking at the siege unfold at this hotel. and. Um, you know, I've been lucky enough to create a resume in that space, so I have a, a bit of a say. So when the script came in, I could see some holes, I could see places where it could be challenged. Such as? Uh, I can't really give it away yet, but it's more to do with the character, uh, the, you know, uh, character uh, to tonally and, and, and with the character's journey. Um, and I was lucky enough to have been able to have a say in being an exec producer and do that. And also decisions in casting and things like that. I helped bring financing to the table as well, so, yeah. So what's next? What other kind of project would you like to work on? I don't know. I, I, I really don't know. I'm, I'm reading scripts right now, I'm writing my own, and um, we'll see. <laughs> yeah.